be weirder. Hello and welcome, my name is Philip Magnus and today I will be talking about the dual narrative structure of control. Dual narratives in gaming are often risky prepositions because of how easy they are to get wrong. The dual narrative in control is an outlier from the standard model. You could very well argue that Remedy Entertainment's latest doesn't make use of this narrative form at all, and you would have an easier time proving it. But bear with me as I expound upon just why I think that it is. Think of the dual narrative employed in Control as twofold. The outer layer tells the story of Jesse Faden, from the moment she walks in the Federal Bureau of Control building and assumes the directorship, all the way to her full acceptance of her role as director of the Bureau. For all the misdirection and mystery surrounding the hiss, it's a fairly straightforward story, with all that comes with that. A cast of supporting characters, a primary antagonist, secondary antagonists, a hero's journey, and by the way, it's a very standard hero's journey to the letter. Buried beneath this is the inner layer, the secondary narrative of the Federal Bureau of Control itself, presented through classified documents, audio tapes, instruction videos and memos, these dozens and even hundreds of artifacts the player can discover and access reveal as pieces of a puzzle would, a snapshot of the Bureau, incomplete but no less fascinating for it. Its nature is fragmentary, and the scarcity of detail that comes with this fragmentation breathes life into the fictional institution. There is a feeling of permanency to the Bureau even through the disaster its new director is weathering through, a suspicion at the back of the player's mind that the Bureau will survive, even if every single one of its employees ends up corrupted by the hiss, even if it ends up a twisted, misshapen version of itself. This should come as no surprise to anyone familiar with the SCP Foundation, from which Remedy Entertainment has freely borrowed plenty. Heck, if we got the Bureau's DNA tested, we'd get at least a 90% match. Not that anyone's complaining, and certainly not I. There are plenty of wonderful ideas authored by the collective behind the SCP Foundation which demand a wider audience. I myself am not too familiar with the Foundation, I've probably read no more than a score of the articles, but even I am aware of how the dozens, even hundreds of memos and documents you can discover throughout the sectors of the Bureau are directly inspired by the format that the SCP entries make use of. The same highbrow scientific style, the same detached clinical analysis of world-altering events and their containment is present here. Put all of this together, and the narrative draws out a portrait of the Bureau as this singular institution, which stands in the way of what former director Trench calls It's a powder keg big enough to blow this world to dust. A temple, a place of worship filled with idols of angry gods. It's all of these, and none of them. And without the Bureau, these words ring particularly true. If this place were ever breached, it would be chaos of biblical proportions. Oh hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the damn duck that does it. Disappearing ducks. Great. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, check out my previous video of Control. And maybe, just maybe, the rest of the channel too. Leave a comment down below, tell me what you thought. Bye! But there's a poison I'd like to administer You think they're cuddly, but I think they're sinister Ducks! Ducks! Quack, quack, quack